I made a very scuffed overlay for this show um, to start with. And this is all my Photoshop skills. So behold the beauty of Bala TW in Photoshop. <laughs> but uh, this is going to be the first episode of, hey, Bala, I have a question. So that is going to be the show where you guys put in all your generic questions that you always do. Um, and we get to answer them. So it's going to be all about com improving it, competitive Fortnite. How do I improve? How do I get better at this game? That, that sort of thing, but a little bit more in depth. And I'm going to take the time to go in depth with those questions as well. So uh, I, I basically came up with this idea because I, I get in my DMs like or, or in DMs or anywhere, really, if I'm streaming or anything like that, I get a bunch of generic questions that I, I can answer. But at the same time, they're not specific enough that I can really make a good impact on it because I don't have the time to spend to answer that question while I'm on stream or in DMs or anything like that, I have to write paragraphs about it. So um, I asked my community, I asked you guys to submit a bunch of questions in Discord. Um, you can do that, it's in the chat, I'll put the description, or I'll put the information in the description below where you can submit a question and I'll try to answer it. So yeah, uh, it's it's actually true. I, I Sometimes my, my DMs are really full of people saying, hey Bala, I have a question, and then it's sometimes, you know, empty. No, they don't say anything after that. Uh, I don't know why. Or sometimes I'm like, okay, what's your question? And then they don't respond or they come up with a really good question or they're also like, hey, Bala, when you're adding Trio Arenas? And I'm like, I'm not an Epic employee. So uh, with all that said, let's, let's start answering some questions. Let's start answering some questions, shall we? The first one, I got a bunch. Uh, we're going to try to get through five, but my minimum is three. The first one's gonna be from Frebic, so let's listen. Hey Bala, I have a question about hi how high pingers should play against low pingers. Especially if the high pinger does a huge amount of damage to the low pinger and he makes one by one. So, and he, the high pinger wants to kill for mobilities, mobility points or anything. And the uh, one, by, one by one player is actually a World Cup finalist, you know, a good player. Uh, so how should he play, uh, hi the high pinger should play around this, like he can't take the balls, phasing through is also hard, uh, what kind of play sh should do that in kind of situations, thank you. Alright, so thank you so much Repic for your question, and it's basically a question about high ping versus low ping, and the question stems about when you have an advantage against the low ping player, so say you get tags, you get them down to 20 HP or something like that, and you want to finish the fight. Um, to me, the, there's a couple clues I get about what ping you have, Frebic. Um, first off, you said that phase tricks are difficult. So that indicates to me that you, you've got to be like 80, 80, 90 ping at least for phase tricks to be a little difficult. Um, so that is basically impossible to take walls if you're fighting against somebody with a decent ping. Um, he also said that, you know, he's fighting against a good player. It's not somebody who's going to be a bot or whatever, and they're going to be easily tricked by certain things, phase tricks being one of those. Um, and then what else did he say? No, that, that's basically it. So the advantage against the player, and he wants to finish the fight, but it's difficult to phase through, and it's difficult to take walls. So um, for me, this thing is always a, it's always a mind game. It's always how to basically... Uh, trick your opponent into losing a wall, right? Or trick him to not pay attention to the specific spot that you're watching or get him into a position where it's going to be uncomfortable, right? Somebody's going to start teaming on him with you or something like that, right? So putting yourself between him and another player or baiting him out. But again, low health. So you want to push the advantage. You want to make sure that he doesn't get heals off uh or anything like that so you have to keep the pressure up so first thing i'm going to suggest is you need to know as many techniques as possible as many 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 techniques as possible wall taking techniques like hitting through the wall or hitting through your ramp or whatever hitting hitting the floor instead of the pyramid when you're on top of somebody's box um phasing through with half stairs phasing through with the the floor edit uh all these things you've got to know you've got to try right so uh, we, we talked about phase tricks being difficult, but there are some tricks, there are some things that are always going to work no matter what. For example, using a ramp and just running through somebody's floor, right? Uh, when, they're, when they're holding Turbo Bill on the floor, you just break through the floor, you're always going to push your head through. Um, so there's some things that work 100% of the time. You got to know which ones do work for you, which ones you can actually use. Because if you don't, and you're just trying random things all the time, you don't really have a way 
to try to finish a fight like this, you're never going to be able to because you're just going to be dilly dallying, pickaxing a wall, jumping on top, pickaxing a roof, whatever, all those different things. So you have to have to know what you want to do to get into somebody's box, whether that be a specific phase trick or whether that be a, a method that you have to trick your opponent into not paying attention to your wall, which is something I'll get into in a second. You have to know that. So you got to find your style, find your technique. That's the biggest thing and learn all the different tricks and try them all, right? You have to have a repertoire that's big enough that you won't like show it off one time. It doesn't work by accident or you mess up and then they'll be able to know and know exactly what to do the, the rest of the time. Um, so that's that part. Now, I talked about mind games a little bit. I talked about tricking them into being uh, not, not paying attention and losing the wall already. So... The big thing there is you need to pressure a lot of different walls and you're basically forcing them into making a mistake. So if you're pressuring different walls, pressuring different roofs, pressuring hard enough that you make them fumble their edits, right? So if you, if you force somebody to be in a box with a stair and, uh, and you, you go to the different side, you're, you're, you're pickaxing the side where his stair is like you're, he's facing you, right? So he can always just be, he's two layers ahead. There's no way you're going to get in there, even if you take the wall. Because again, high ping, whatever. But if you then rotate to the other side, and now he has to not only hold his wall, but eventually he wants to rotate his stairs or break them or whatever it is. Now he has to make an action besides holding turbo build. He has to, right? It's the same thing when you swap to a pyramid instead of hitting the wall, he has to take an action to switch to the pyramid. So there's all these different things that you can force them to take actions while they're in their box besides holding turbo build um, by, again, switching walls, which isn't always that, it's, always, it's not always an action, right? They have to have stairs inside of there to really take an action, but switching to the roof or switching to the floor and tricking them into thinking that you're hitting the roof rather than the floor, then you get the floor and now they're, now they have to make an action. They have to have a self-conscious action that they don't have that floor anymore. So they're already under pressure, right? They might want to then, now that they lost the floor, make an edit out of the box. And that's when you can catch them, right? That's when you can get on top of them and they only have 20 HP. So you, you go for it. Um, so that's what I'm talking about when I'm saying pressure different walls and force them to fumble and edit, fumble their action, fumble their defensive play, okay? Uh, and I did mention uh, finding, <laughs> finding somebody, to, uh, this is a, a note that I wrote before I went live, was finding somebody to team with. <laughs> so um, there's, there's you, you can, if you put yourself in, in between somebody, and this is more applicable in late, late mid game and late end game, especially in competitive games. Uh, if, if you put them between you and somebody else and you start pickaxing their wall and you do enough to make it so, make it obvious that that player should start shooting, uh, then, then you're golden, right? Because then you can just start shooting yourself and it's basically playing duo. So there, there's plenty of options there. Obviously, he's low HP, so you don't want that necessarily to happen. But yeah, find somebody to team with in solos, dude, or duos or whatever. Just <laughs> just get in there. Just find ways to get in there. Um, okay, and then the last last topic about about box fighting with high ping is footsies is, the, is, is of utmost importance. And footsies to me is basically keeping your distance between... Um, your yourself and them so that if they do make an edit on you you have the opportunity to place a stair or close a wall or close a floor or whatever it may be and you're also staying out of their optimal range of damage and you're staying within your optimal range of damage um and so you're, you're constantly you know going back and forth back and forth when he has the opportunity you're out of optimal range when he when you have an opportunity and he doesn't like those are the type of things and we'll get into that a little bit more because we have another high ping question, not as high ping as this, I think, uh, but we do have another high ping question. So we'll get into footsies a little bit more, but you have to master that because you don't want to end up in a situation not only where you had an advantage and you lost it, but where then he can start pressuring you too. So that's important. Okay. Cool. I hope that helps, Frebic. Thank you for submitting. Let me go ahead and move on to the next question, which is submitted by Podzi. Let's hear. Hey, Ball, I've been playing since season three, and for the past couple of seasons, I felt like I've hit my skill thing, which I know is not the case. I know playing tons of solos is the best way to improve game sense and whatnot, and I know I have potential to do that. 
I tried it around season 6 and I saw the results, but the only thing is that even though I was getting better, I hated playing alone for hours. I feel like I just don't have the motivation to put in the effort, like for example in Overwatch I thought of losing MMR made me spend nearly 90% of my time in casual matches, but the team play aspect just made the competitive gameplay somewhat enjoyable. Since summer just started and my duo was off on vacation, I thought this would be a perfect time to grind. I really want to get into a World Cup weekly finals at least once, but that didn't really end up happening, and I think this mindset is just holding me back. Do you have any pointers I guess on how to get into a state of mind where I can just continuously grind and only focus on improving. Thanks. Cool. Uh, thanks, Posse. I'm sorry if that was a little low. I tried to adjust the gain in the middle. Um, but basically, so this is a question about uh, improving, keeping your motivation up, and uh, and staying. Yeah, basically staying motivated, playing solos. Right. He, he mentioned something about solos being the way that he he wants to improve. So whatever that is, um, and I think this is a very common uh, thought. For a lot of people, how do you how do you stay motivated? How do I keep practicing day in day out, right? Um, especially so, why I say it's a common question is because of the ten weeks of World Cup qualifiers. I have tons of friends who are who are like, oh, dude, I got it. I I don't know if this game is for me, man. I played ten weeks. I love. I'm not. I'm not improving. Whatever. Whatever. There's. I think there's a huge percent of the community right now that is completely burnt out. I think we're starting to ramp up a little bit, but. Uh, we, we, we're getting so burnt out that everybody has the same thought as Podzi. How do I improve my mindset so that I can continue improving? So the, the first thing I want to say is, is people, you, we need to recognize our, um, our burnout point. We need to recognize when our body and our mind tells us we are burnt out, right? Or we're getting to burnout. And that is when you stop having fun. Uh, when you stop being passionate for the game, when you stop, when you dread coming on, when you dread playing scrims, when you dread playing creative or whatever, you just don't feel like it. Uh, that to me is my, is, is my burnout point, but everybody's burnout points will vary, right? Some people will burn out way earlier where they're like, well, I still want to play, but like, I, I just, I'm just, I just don't feel like I'm improving. That's, that's also a burnout point, right? Some people's are way later. They can go grind, 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 grind. And their burnout point is way later. So you just have to know yourself. Know when you need a break, okay? I, I hate to see when people just grind, 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 and then they crash and burn and quit and never come back and they end up depressed and that's not healthy for them uh, for, for their own career in this game and it's not healthy for them physically and mentally as well. Um, so you got to know your burnout point. That burnout point doesn't mean that you need to, to quit, right? That just means you need to take take things slow. Take a break. Go 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 do something else, right? Go play. You, you could even play the game in a different way, right? Just, just stop taking it as serious for, for a week or, or a couple of days or something like that. And again, everybody will be different. Everybody will vary um, along the way. So... The solutions to burnout are, are huge. And you just have to know what when to do and then just do something just do something to not always just break your routine is essentially the, the way so that's burnout you're not talking about burnout you're not saying you're burnt out um, there's maybe a hint of that in terms of you like being a little nostalgic about playing overwatch and other team games and stuff like that where, where this aspect apparently was easier for you um, but it's the same thing when when you think about it it's just that you don't have people helping you along the way you don't have a team that has to rely on you you don't have that camaraderie aspect um, when you're playing solos, I mean, again, why not just play duos and you'd get the same kind of thing, right? Uh, the 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 difference I think between Overwatch and other games and and Fortnite is the the way that we can practice, and we all know the difficulty in practicing right now is uh, is dire, um, with with no tree arena, with no leaderboards, with no custom systems that are very frustrating. Um, so, I get it. I get that there's definitely a difference between this game and others. But it's still, still at its fundamental core, improving in this game and staying motivated in this game is the same as anything else. So how do you do that? Um, first off, you need to decide how, to, how, how you structure your practice. Do you structure your practice, right? Do you structure your practice? Are you somebody who needs a schedule? Um, a, uh, uh, at least, not, not necessarily even a schedule, but at least you know, a structure of things. Do you do aim prac? And then creative, and then edit courses, and then arena, and then this. Do you, do you, are you that type of person? If you are, good. 
write it down and figure out what it actually is. Okay. And then find ways to track your own improvement, right? We don't have a leaderboard, but we have ourselves. We have our eyes and we have our brain to decide, are we improving? Did we learn something today? Are we fixing our mistakes day to day in every single aspect in practice in practice? We have obviously scores that can help us, but you could also say, am I smoother with my aim today? In free build, did I learn a new technique? Did I do something more cleanly? Am I now blocking where I wasn't before? Am I not flooring myself? Am I doing my 90 in the best way possible? All these things are questions that you can answer to, to make sure that you are improving. Every single step, every single thing that you do, whether you're structured or not, should have this kind of uh, feedback for yourself. Okay? So structured or not, I'll, I'll get into structure later because I think for me, at least, this is me and I'm speaking from my own experience only, um, structured is very good for me. But, okay, we have, we have a practice regimen. All right. But what I want you to do to stay motivated is I want you guys to break your practice regimens every once in a while. Don't be so uptight about the game. Guys, this is Fortnite. I mean, come on. We play one of the most ridiculous games uh, out of any of them, right? There's so many stupid things you can do that it's just a blast. Just hang out with a friend for a while and just do stupid things. Do a no, no kill challenge. I did I did one one with yesterday with Bumpa and it was a blast. Okay? Like it wasn't it wasn't it was a competitive Fortnite. I didn't get the same thrill. Well, actually, you know what I did? I did get a renewed thrill because it was like I never did that before. Do do stupid things. Try to get people in Tilted Tower to to dance with you or something like that. I don't know. Just do really dumb things and fun things. Play creative maps that are new and interesting to you. We played Shoots and Ladders a, a couple months ago and it was one of the funnest things we did in Fortnite in a while, you just have to do things that are new and enjoyable, right? Because that is where you're going to be the most motivated is those new and enjoyable things. Learning a new technique, being the, the one that you would do in practice, winning a custom or anything like that. Those are the new and enjoyable things or being better. Those are the new and enjoyable things you're doing during practice, but you have to have other things to do as well. Play a different game, right? Play CSGO. Play, I don't know, Wild Classic. Play anything, play a different game and just, you know, chill, relax, have, have fun. Okay. And then come back the next day and get back on the grind, right? Just break your routine every once in a while. I think that is the most uh, important point that I'm trying to make. Break your routine, whether that's still playing Fortnite, doing silly things in Fortnite or, you know, playing a different game or going outside or uh, playing some board games, whatever, cooking. I don't care. Just do Play Minecraft, some people in the chat are saying. Yeah, exactly. Just do different things. That's that's all I'm saying. Um, that's going to help you stay motivated because you're you're breaking the routine. You're not staying as rigid. And you're, you're at least injecting some fun, right? Practice every day is not going to be fun every day. I wish it was, but it's not going to be fun every day, okay? All right, so... Now that we've talked about breaking your routine and getting into other things, what else can you do to, to stay motivated? Um, so in my, in my case, again, I, I talked about structure. Um, I make sure that I have a variety of practice, okay? I play pubs myself. I, obviously, I don't have that much time anymore to actually play the damn game. I wish I did, but uh, I, I play pubs because they're fun. There's literally nobody knows. I'm just chilling by myself, playing pubs, playing solo squads, whatever. Just having a good time. Just if I die, I die. I'm trying to learn a new technique or something like that, right? I literally will do a variety of things. I'll free build. I will 1v1. I'll box fight. I'll zone wars. I'll turtle fight. I literally do so many different things. I play arena. Right, I play arena for W key. I play arena for placement. I play customs as hard as I can. I play customs for W key. I do all these things uh, to to vary my practice so that I'm not one dimensional. Obviously, that that's that's more of a where are we going? Like we're trying not to be one dimensional thing. It's not about motivation, but it helps motivation. Right, the the best motivation is improving. So if you are improving in a bunch of different aspects at a time that's going to be uh, really beneficial, okay? Uh, and when we're on the topic of, of practice, like different practice types, switching 
having a variety of practice, you have to realize, okay, that even though practice is not representative of a competitive environment, even though it's not representative of World Cup finals, you can still improve from anything that you do in the game, right? Shit, you could improve by, by playing a pub. Like I said, you could literally improve by playing pubs for competitive, right? It's, it's basketball players don't always have a match to play, right? Sure, they have pickup games, but I would argue that pickup games are just as bad quality as arena for real basketball, for real competitive basketball. Think about that for a second, right? Basketball players, they practice by going and shooting shots. Like that, that is their main source of practice. They just shoot. They do mic and drills, right? Right under the hoop. They just do layups. They dribble, right? So that's the equivalent of, of creative for us, but they're, they, I, I feel like their situation is even more drastic than ours, right? How do you, how do you improve? It doesn't matter if it's, if it's a real competitive environment. Pratt Court has a big issue right now where people are not taking it seriously because everybody thinks that it's a joke because even in Atlantis is the same thing. Everybody thinks it's a joke because there's no end game or whatever. There's, there's only 20 people moving. In arena, it's even worse. People are like, there's no real practice here. But you, you have to understand that you can still improve. Even if you're playing against a bot, you can still improve. If you're playing against somebody significantly worse than you, you can still figure out how to make your technique better. Right. It's it's just at the end of the day, we play a game where we have to react so fast that there's really not much thinking involved. It's just mechanics. So if you just grind your mechanics and you grind your brain to do the right things in the right time. There you go. Obviously, there's decision making involved that you can take some time to make decisions. And we'll get into the, some of that later on when we have a question about rotating an endgame. But like. Let, let break it down, guys. When you VOD review yourself, find an error. Even if you win a game, find an error and come up with a solution to fix it. I've said this so many times. Come up with an actionable solution to fix things. And that's how you will get better no matter what the practice is. I'll play a pub and I'll, I'll watch a fight back or I'll play a fight back in my head. I don't typically watch VODs of me fighting in pubs. <laughs> Uh, I, I have in the past, but don't typically do that. I watch a fight and say, wow, I took damage there when I shouldn't have because I opened an edit that was false, that gave him the opportunity to shoot me back, even though I was editing faster than him and all this stuff. I still gave him an opportunity. So I, when I am fighting a guy on this side of the box, I'm going to now try to make this edit. And then I do that the next game. And I'm like, okay, cool. Boom, improvement. All right, so there you go. So hard. This is a, this is a comment from... Tra from chat it's so hard improving a controller you're so limited why why i don't understand that at all it's the same thing right sure it is controllers hard don't get me wrong we've had this debate on hotline fn on twitter everywhere controllers hard don't get me wrong but when we're talking about improving it's the same thing it's literally the same thing practice something see what's wrong with it and fix it that's what improvement comes down to Whatever way you're doing it, whatever game you're playing, if you're playing a custom practice court game with the best pros in the world, or whether you're playing arena with a couple of bots, like it's the same thing. Uh, so I, I think I think we're good there. I don't I don't think anything else needs to be said, Podsy. I hope that answered your question. So let's continue to move on. Continue to move on. Let's get into question number three here from Tim. Hey, Bala, I have a question. Lately, I've been grinding Zone Wars, and 1v1's pretty non-stop. So much uh, that actual matches have started to feel weird, and I feel like I've lost a lot of the game sense I once had. How can I keep my game sense and decision-making fresh while still getting the mechanical grind that is needed? All right. Thank you, Tim. We love Tim. My co-host from Hotline FN, what a beast. Thank you for the question. Um, so, question says, I've been grinding Zone Wars and 1v1 nonstop, and he's curious about make, keeping his decision-making fresh and still keeping his mechanics up. This is something that I have a huge struggle with right now, right? Because literally all my time spent on the game is, is spent grinding mechanics. Because I don't have the time to scrim. When when it's nighttime, I have I have to do things. 
I have to do other things that isn't playing the game, right? I have to play the game during the day. And then also I'm traveling so much that I never have the time to really push any sort of serious improvement in terms of decision making and uh, and that sort of thing. Mechanics is the easiest thing for me to improve at right now because of the time that I have. So I'm very much like Tim. I'm very much grinding 1v1, Zone Wars, uh, things that are easy arena, right? But I'm, I'm mostly grinding my mechanics. Uh, and that's... A fault of mine right so let's let's be very clear right off the brat bat right off the brat yes you brat let's get off of you uh let's be very clear that practicing zone wars and 1v1s non-stop is not gonna help you in making your decision making fresh uh i mean zone wars to an extent right you can you can increase your decision making in zone wars by you know which fights to take which who who do you psycho on all that sort of stuff um, there are certain game sense elements in Zone Wars that definitely translate to real games, but people tend to not always play Zone Wars the same way they would treat real games, and there's still there's still improvements to be made on Zone Wars, I feel. But uh, there there's game sense improvements to be had there. So watch watch your vods back in Zone Wars. But the the number one thing to start is let's let's all recognize that this is a terrible way to practice for game sense. That doesn't mean that we can keep our game sense fresh and, and I need to find an answer for this to myself, for myself. Uh, but I think the answer, like the best answer and it, whether this is possible or not, that's the key, right? Whether this is possible or not is to stop grinding so much Zone Wars and 1v1s and play the real game, play the real game. Whether you have the time to do that or whatever, or whether that's enjoyable for you, that's, that's another question. So. Let's just say that off the bat, and then now let's let's try to let's try to find a situation, try to find a way to uh, to answer the question where you are only basically playing one v ones and zone wars, and you still want to get better game sense, right? So uh, 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 you need to be basically there's a disconnect between learning mechanics in in zone wars and one v ones and learning uh, game sense. They're, they're kind of, well, they're, they're intertwined to a certain degree, right? Because when you think about it, when you learn a new technique, you only get really good at that technique once you've used it for a long time and you've used it in a bunch of different situations. Uh, so let's say you learn a new phasing trick technique. That's what I'm doing right now. I, I only am just learning, haha, Bala is a, is a caster, haha. I'm only now just learning the, the half stairs that it phase through the wall, okay? And I'm st starting to try to use that a lot. Um, but I'm slow with it, right? I'm really, really slow with it. I am very, very predictable. When I start setting it up, man, I am a, I am a turtle. But that has changed over the last week, right? Now that I've practiced with it a couple days, I have become fast and I've started to get in. I've started to get through the wall, place a stair, edit the stair, get the shot off, okay? So that is a thing that you start getting in, you start increasing your skills with the new techniques, the little things that you're learning, the, the turtling that you're doing in Zone Wars, the, the build fight techniques that you're doing in 1v1s. And you start to, when you get fast enough and when you get really good at them, you start to, you start to realize all these different applications of them. You start to see the patterns, okay? So you can continuously get better and learn a technique and get so much better at it that you will now see different patterns and that as an extension is increasing your game sense, right? Um, so that that is the tie-in between mechanics and game sense, especially when you reach towards end game, right? Making these different edits that you're learning, making a different edit for your shots, okay? Just, just this is very silly, right? It's, I'm changing from making, uh, this is just an example. I'm changing from making window edits to making triangle edits to take shots on people, okay? These situations, you do it a thousand times in zone wars and you're start, starting to realize, okay, now I can start doing these in different situations. I will do a window edit here. I'll do a triangle edit there. Those are the type of situations you're gonna see because you're grinding your mechanics. You're getting so fast at doing them. You're getting so fast at these new techniques um, that's how you will improve your game sense. Uh, so how to keep things fresh. Hmm. Again, I, I want to, I keep wanting to go back and say, you need to, you need to play different things, but 
Uh, I, I I think you if you only have time to watch to play one v ones and and zone wars, um, then then spend some time like watching watching in bed watching those back record them and watch them back while you're in bed and take a few notes mental notes or written notes whatever take a few notes on what you could do better when you are faced with a decision right watch some mistakes that end up you dying right away especially when you think about zone wars right there's there's points in time where you exit the the spawn pad you just run out and then you end up just getting obliterated figure out how to stop that do you need to change your leveling do you need to do something like that what's the what's the fix there so watch things back you can do the same thing in 1v1 right watch things back i i just recently was 1v1ing uh bump a lot yesterday actually and the the i had an, i had an occurrence right that i that I always, when I get somebody in my box, or when I get a stare over somebody, I always go for the same stare at it. And guess what it does? It actually is opening myself up for a left hand, left shoulder peek. So bump it, or whoever I'm one v one in gets a right hand peek every single time. And I realize that that's how I die a lot when I play arena. That's how I die a lot when I play customs, because either I die right there, or I get chunked so much that I can't do anything anymore. So that that's an that's an example of decision making. That's kind of like mechanics, right? I need to just stop. I need to break that habit. So I literally, I saw that one day and the next day I was in creative and I was, I was just boxing myself up, putting a stare up and then editing it the other way, taking a shot, going again, boxing myself up, putting a stare up and then editing it the other way and taking a shot. So that is basically the answer there. I know that wasn't as super in depth as I really wanted to get there, uh, but hopefully it helps. I think VOD reviewing even Zone Wars and 1v1s is the solution and you got to find errors and you've got to, uh, you've got to fix them. And that is certainly going to translate into real things. And think about when you're actually in those real situations. Think about in a Zone Wars how that actually would happen in Endgame. Where would that happen? Because you have to make sure that you have that connection between the pattern that occurs in Zone Wars and the pattern that occurs in real games. Okay. All right. So let us skip to the next one. Thank you, Tim. My love. Uh oh. I see you guys. I see Arena Trios is out. That is Pog. And I'm gonna continue because I can't do anything about it in the middle of the in the middle show. Arena Trios! Let's go to the next question. Hey Bob. I have a quick question. So I'm a fifty ping player and uh Box fights are a huge thing in Fortnite, and I know all the properties of box fight, like going for walls, doing edits, all that stuff. Uh, but the thing is, I'm a 50 pin player, like I said earlier, so it's kind of hard for me to execute everything perfectly. And a big thing that hyping players have to do in box fights is wait for edits to get opened, which can like result in me getting tagged, maybe hard for 100 plus, who knows. And my question is. I want to know how to take less 50-50s in box fights towards the mid and end game with like 50 to 60 ping. All right. So that was a question from Vlad. Um, thank you. And this is a little bit of overlap from the first question, so we're not going to spend so much time on it. But there are a couple of things I want to touch on in this question that I thought were interesting and different from uh, Freibik's question early on. So uh, the first thing that I, I will... I will um, kind of criticize you Vlad for saying is you said I know all the mechanics of box fighting I don't know what you said the properties of box fighting so just that's not true like that is not true you do not know all the properties of box fighting you do not know all the techniques you don't know all the phase tricks you don't know all the wall replace tricks you don't know all the different edits that are perfect there is no way that you know everything and if you think that then you're wrong and you're not going to improve and find new things because you think you know everything all right so let's move on. <laughs> so all the stuff that I said about Freibic obviously applies here, but being on 50 ping versus 100 ping is a lot different. Okay, you can still phase through. You can still do a lot of things. You're not, your edits are not literally so slow. They're not, they, you can't feel it, right? You can still make edits quick. Uh, it is obviously slower, but, oh, a little bit of camera shake. It is obviously slower, but you can still do things in a relatively quick fashion. So, um, 
know all the techniques, know all the things. Execution is harder. You can't take walls, and phasing is harder, but again, it all matters. So mind games, all the stuff that I said with Frebic is very applicable. Uh, finding the technique that works for you, I think this is even more applicable for you. But what I really want to touch on is don't box fight everybody. Why, why do you need to box fight everybody? Just just because box fighting is the is the is the way right now. Like, why do you need to box fight everybody? Seriously, ask yourself that. Do you need to box fight this guy? You you didn't say anything about like pushing an advantage or anything like that. It just sounds like you want to box fight people. So why? Is this just you're improving your box fighting? Is this just because you have a fetish for box fighting? Because it's fun? Hey, sometimes I fall in that category, man. I, I love box fighting, but I also have zero ping, so it's a little different. <laughs> uh, the, there, there is, there is a, a huge thing right now where people are just literally always box fighting, and that's why you end up in 50-50s all the time, because there's no reason for you to be box fighting, but you both end up doing it anyways, and so you end up in a 50-50, because you're not pressing an advantage. You're not pushing yourself in a, in a space that you need to be, you, you mentioned mid and end game box fights. So like even there, like there's so many people around you and obviously you have to box fight if you're box fighting people, unless you're looking for picks, just normal picks, some people rotating, but like, this is what I'm saying. Why do you need to box fight everybody? Think about that. Think about that hardcore. Okay. Um, now there's another concept here where you need to stop box fighting people who know you're box fighting them, right? If they know you're box fighting them, again, that's that goes back to the why are you box fighting them? But if they know you're box fighting them, then yes, it's going to end up in a 50-50 if you don't play it exactly perfect, right? Going to end up in a 50-50 if, if you don't play it exactly perfect. That means if you make the wrong edit, once you finally get their wall and you get a stare over them, and you make the wrong edit like I just talked about with Tim's question, then you will end up in a situation where they will shoot you and you will shoot them back and then you will trade and then you'll maybe close the edit and whatever. Um, but yeah, if, if he knows you're box fighting him and you don't have an advantage, he's probably going to put you in a situation where it's 50-50. So that, that's, that's a thing. Make sure if you're, especially end game, you can box fight people so many times where they have no clue you're box fighting them. You literally just pickaxe their wall and because the audio is the way that it is, they don't hear it and you can just kill them or they're shooting their gun. They're focused on something else. They have selective hearing or selective vision even, right? I've seen times where somebody's shooting out of a window and there's a box. They can see the wall getting pickaxe. They can see the player there, but they don't react because they have selective vision. They're so tunnel visioned on the one player in front of them. So if you're end game fighting, please don't fight people who are watching you unless you know that you're going to win the fight and you're not going to uh, you're not going to 50-50, right? If you have 200 HP, they have 100, they have a combat shotgun and, and you, you can make sure that you will clean up that fight and it won't be bad for you. Please, in end game specifically. I talk about mid game. Mid game is a little different. Sometimes you have to box fight, whatever. Um, so uh, the, the other thing is footsies. I said that I would talk about that a little later. Uh, so let's, let's pick that back up on this question is footsies. So you don't want to take 50 fifties. So you must make sure that you are keeping distance where even if they do get a chip shot, they're going to hit your feet, which is funny because I'm calling this, uh, this distance thing footsies. This is a, this is a term that I'm, I'm stealing from the fighting game community, right? Footsies, keeping yourself a distance so that you can't get hit by their long jabs or long kicks or whatever and all that different, different stuff. So make sure that. And then the other thing is uh, make sure that you have something in between that you can place or that you can reset or that you can whatever. So like that's a floor, that's a stair. You can reset your stair if they do try to make an opportunity on you. You said you have to wait for them to open edits a lot of times. So make sure that you damn well have a stair or a floor that you can jump on and, and edit or, or a wall or something like that. Okay. And then the other thing that I'm going to say, and this is, this is something that Booga and all the box fighters is, are the best at. The best is taking everything make sure you're controlling everything in the box that you can okay if you start box fighting somebody they go into a different box you place a stair over them take all the walls first before you make your edit okay all that stuff and then know the techniques with traps all the stuff that you can do if you get a stair over somebody and then you're holding an edit and they're not editing out of their walls or it's completely yours or whatever you can make sure you know how to you, you know to place a trap up rotate your stairs all this sort of stuff like react to them 
Uh, and then edits, make sure that you make the correct edits for them. Right shoulder peaks only. Be very cognizant of that. If you're right shoulder peaking only, it will never be a 50-50 because you have a wall in front of yourself, a stair in front of yourself where you're right shoulder peaking, you're going to get the shot first. And if they do get a shot, it's on, you know, targets that aren't hitting much. It's, it's your body, it's your shoes, it's your hands, whatever. And then you also have the thing that you can reset. So boom, boom, boom. All right. So since we talked about that question a little bit earlier on, uh, we're going to move on from this now. I hope that helps, Vlad. Uh, I hope that helps. All right. Last question of the day is going to be from Chibi. And I'm trying to find the file right now. Here it is. Boom. Let's listen. Bala, what's the best way to rotate with a shockwave during duos and half in, half out zone and six zone as well? Okay, uh, that was really short. <laughs> I knew it was really short, but it still caught me by surprise. Um, so he, he said, let's let's just recap it because I'm sure a lot of you guys missed it too. Bala, what's the best way to rotate with shock waves during duos and half in, half out and six zone as well? Um, so this question is, is, is really, really specific. Uh, so it's actually easy to answer, but for me, it's actually hard to answer because I'm not Speedy Gonzalez, man. I don't know these little tricks. I don't know all these damn little tricks. Go ask Speedy. <laughs> Go ask Speedy. He's the guy who's experimenting and figuring out what the best way to rotate with, with shockwaves is. Um, but 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 let's talk generally about this, right? Let's talk about the situations where you're rotating with, with shockwaves, with low mobility, whatever. Our philosophy in half in, half out, and six zone in duos specifically. We can get a little bit more general there and uh, and elaborate a little bit where it's not just what's the best technique for rotating uh, with shockwaves. So I, I think... I think we have to ask the first thing that you need to be doing in duos is ask yourselves, what is the best option? Okay, let's say we do have just a shockwave or something like that, and we're, we need to go far during half in, half out. Okay, let's think about what the best options are. Is using the shockwave the right play at that, current, at that time? Are you going to get beamed? Are you going to get split? Is it going to be really difficult for you guys to actually execute a good, a good shockwave thing if you, if you don't know the Speedy Gonzalez technique for, for uh, whatever reason, right? Or if you've never actually set it up, you've never practiced it, so you, you're going you're gonna to screw it up. You're going to flub it. Um, ask yourself what the best way to go is. Are you waiting for people to rotate? Right? Are you waiting for people to spend their mobility? Can you find a community launch pad or a community... What, ah, there's no more rift to goes. Dang. Is it really only community launch pads? I guess it is. Uh, can you find any of that? Can you pressure somebody enough that that can be a thing? Is there an old build that nobody is using anymore that you could actually just break in and go for a long distance, right? And half and half out, I don't think a shockwave can get you across the entire way unless you're off the side of a mountain, right? In which case, obviously, that would be the best decision is just run and shockwave and go off the side of the mountain. Uh, but yeah, there, there, there are situations where you can go find old builds. You can make a rotate on foot for a while and then shockwave the rest of the way. Something safe, right? Old builds, uh, a side of a mountain, right? There's nobody on this side of the mountain. Everybody's rotated off or whatever, or there's a, a vision blocker that you can get behind. All those things. Think about, it. look for them, look for the opportunities. Uh, and then, then you can make a shockwave. Don't just shockwave. And then put yourself in unfamiliar territory and then have to tunnel the rest of the way in. Okay. Think about it. Ask yourself the questions and see, is there any other ways that we can get into zone without using the one shockwave that we have? And I'm, I'm thinking that you're low mobility. That's my uh, uh, immediate assumption, right? Um, the other thing is with shockwaves, I think you want to put yourself when you're using them, you want to be able to catch yourself on something high, right? Just because there is that element of uh, high ground take and you don't want to waste that. So you want to make sure that you get close and half in, half out and then shockwave and then catch yourself on high so that you can look for opportunities for getting, for getting kills. In six zone, it's even more important, right? At the end of six zone, once, once you can get in zone, try to connect yourself. You want to shockwave yourself so that you can connect to high ground or be the person on high ground. That is... Very important, right? That is something that you can use in shockwaves that you want to make sure that you're using. Okay, um, so the the I, th I think the also the concern here for Chibi is getting split uh, with a shockwave, and that's why you want to know the best way to to rotate with shockwaves. So uh, I I'd recommend literally just 
in half and half out in six zone, it isn't the worst thing to be split. People, there's so many people that is actually very difficult to realize when somebody is solo. If you just extend a two by one, it's so hard to actually tell if somebody is solo in half and half out and six zone because there's so many people. Obviously, it depends on what, what game you're playing, what, what, what practice you're playing, if you're playing a custom, whether you're playing arena, whether you're playing whatever. Uh, but possible, right? It's, it's not the end of the world to get split. So I would recommend play half and half out split sometimes. Try it. Just give it a shot, right? Because you know that there's situations where you, you're going to get split with shockwaves. See what happens. Is it, is it often easy for you guys to just get back? In which case, worrying about rotating with a shockwave is not, not at all a concern for you guys because you can just get right back with each other. Is it actually beneficial for you guys to stay split in half and half out and because you find more kills? Hmm? There, there, there's that. There is that element. Being split is not the worst thing in the world. If you watch Stompy and Shinkin play, half and half out, they actually are quite often split. They control much more space when split. Actually, even towards the end of the game, they they like to they like to diverge and look for so many different angles, like separately. Sure, there's the opportunity that they get super split and they don't end up being together and they can't play teamwork, which they which they excel at, right? That's one of the reasons why they're so good. But they have proved time and time again that it's not the worst thing in the world to be split. And I, I see uh Tifu and Cloak. Are, are a duo that, that gets split quite often and end up having no problem. So I'm, I'm sad that we're not going to be able to see them at World Cup because they are, they are one of the best at that. If at, if at TwitchCon, you watch their, heat, their games, their qualifying games at, at TwitchCon, probably 60% of the four games, they were split because Tifu ended up going to do something else. He got tunnel vision on a kill, closely rotated, and Tifu was nowhere to be found. And they end up back together and they end up winning the game because Tifu and Cloak, they know how to play when they're split. So I would recommend go play a couple games, split yourselves on purpose. Uh, Tom and Vivid is another, uh, was it Tom and Vivid? Yeah, Tom and Vivid is another example of playing split and being totally f comfortable. And don't worry about it at all. Uh, and I think that's where a big concern of using shockwaves correctly is coming from. So play split, get comfortable like that. Don't panic when you're split, especially if there's you know other options for you guys. You have mats, all that sort of stuff. And then the last thing I would touch on on this topic, rotating when uh, rotating when you have only shockwaves or something like that, is let's talk about it, right? Let's talk about your setup. Why do you only have shockwaves? Why don't you have one shockwave or something like that to rotate already? Are you that concerned of getting split because you don't have mats? Ask yourself about your setup. Don't, if, if you lose a game because you didn't have mobility or you, you run out of mats, the, the answer, the question that you should be asking is not, is not, how do I play when I have no mats? That is not the question you should be asking yourself. You should be asking yourself, how do I put myself in a position where I don't have to play without having mats? Okay. That is the big thing for me is I see this so many times. So many people are asking in, in my, in, in my chat, in my DMs, how do I play low mats? And, and the answer is almost don't play low mats. Right? It's the same thing that I told Tim right? when he was like, how do I play? How do I improve my game sense when I'm playing Zone Wars and, and 1v1s? Don't, right? Like, this is, the setup is a huge thing. Your early game and your mid game determine how good you can, how your potential in the end game, right? Right off the bat. Sure, you could end up getting a kill in end game that will put you back in a position where you don't have to worry about mats again, and that's what you should do in those situations. And you should prepare for situations where you end up in low mats because you never know what will happen to you in a game. You never know, right? And that's kind of the RNG factor going into it. But again, it will, it will mitigate itself over multiple games if you play the correct way, right? So ask yourself, why do you only have a shockwave to rotate? And can you fix that? All right. So that was the first episode, the first ever episode of Hey Bala, I have a question. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, that was really fun for me. I really enjoyed just talking to myself. <laughs> no, it was a blast. I love getting in depth and in, into the nitty gritties and bullshitting for a little while. Uh, not bullshitting. I, I, I'm speaking from my own experience. I'm speaking from watching so many stuff. I hope, um, hope you guys found it helpful. Uh, if you do, if you did, and you want to be featured as a question, make sure you uh, submit some questions. Uh, go ahead and type 
Hey Bala in the chat, exclamation bay. Hey Bala, and there's instructions in my Discord on how to submit a question. You'll basically make a voice recording and uh, type what your name is, and then I'll put you up if the question is good enough. Um, or if I haven't talked about all that sort of stuff. So I'm probably not going to talk about high paying situations in the future, but yeah, hit me with anything. Hit me with anything. With that said, that's going to be a wrap. I will be checking off and rating somebody. If you enjoyed that video, if you liked watching this on Twitch, make sure you do all the things on my social media, like the YouTube video, subscribe to my YouTube channel, do all the things on my social media, Twitter, Instagram, go ahead and go follow those guys. And uh, use creator code Bala TW. It's, it's, a, it's a hard life out here. No, it's not. It's not a hard life at all. But uh, it helps tremendously. It, it motivates me. So please do all those things. With that said, I'm out, guys. Bye.